Hi, welcome to Consulting Confidant's live case demonstration. I'm Sean Glassman, the CEO of Consulting Confidant, and I'm here with Dave Mott. Welcome. Hey guys. All right, so we are gonna do a live case, so, and then give some commentary throughout. So let's do it. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's do it. The year is 1930. Your client, Hal Ponka, is the leader of an organized crime group in Chicago. His organization currently participates in multiple industries, alcohol bootlegging, gambling, loan sharking, and ice cream parlors. Mm. Overall sales growth has remained constant at 20% per year, and Mr. Ponka wants to accelerate it to over 50% over the next year. He has hired you to figure out how to accelerate his growth. All right. Yeah, so after you hear the case prompt, that's a really great time where you want to summarize what you just heard to make sure that you understood it correctly and you're not missing anything. And just to reiterate, you definitely want to summarize. You don't want to repeat the case prompt back verbatim. Yeah, so one of the biggest mistakes that I see with students doing this is that uh, they hear the prompt and then they write down their notes and then they read the prompt back to me, you know. I have the prompt. I know exactly what it says. You don't have to do that. Just think of something original, pick your own words, but definitely don't repeat it back. Yeah. And it looks like we have a pretty diversified set of industries that we play in. Uh, illegal alcohol, illegal gambling, illegal loans, and legal ice cream. That's and, correct. Um, looks like we're pretty good at what we do. 20% Kager, um, and we're looking to accelerate to 50%, right? So to me, this sounds like a classic growth strategy case, just classic. Uh, 1930s classic, as a matter of fact. Um, and so I'd like to explore how to do that. And so can I take a minute to think about ways to expand Hal's portfolio and essentially grow our, grow our revenue? That'd be fantastic. Yeah, so for those of you following on at home, I think it's a great time for you to just create a framework. Pretend you're the interviewee right now and just write it out the exact same way that you would if you were actually doing the case. All right, so here's the way I'd like to think about our, our business, right? So it sounds like we're trying to just grow revenues, just make as much money as possible. Um, the way that I think about this, there's actually a couple different ways we can do it. Um, the first is which is grow organically. So take our current four lines and just expand them, right? Mm -hmm. um, ways that we could do that potentially you know, include jacking up the price, um, you know, getting our distribution. I don't know if we're just in Chicago, maybe we've thought about Milwaukee. Um, mm. A lot of different ways to grow there, right? Um, another way might be to enter new industries. Um, and so there are a lot of illicit things that we could do. It sounds like we're not selling drugs yet, so drugs could be a way to go. Um, and with lastly, you know, I think acquisition, you know, inorganic growth, mergers and mergers and acquisitions. That might actually be good. And so, you know, there's a lot of different things we can do, like merge with other famous families, um, mm -hmm. take them out and take their business, a lot of different things that we can think about, right? So those are kind of the three areas I'd like to start with. That's fantastic. Um, from there, we can look at, you know, actual competition, kind of examine the market potentially, um, look at different pricing schemes, and then from there, we should be able to come to a conclusion on how to grow our business. That sounds great. All right. So where do we start, right? I'd say... So typically in a case interview setting, uh, the interviewee is not going to be asking the interviewer uh, where to start. It typically goes the other way around. As in those situations, what you'll find is that the interviewer will actually ask and say, well, well what do you think? Yeah, I'd say let's start looking into organic. Okay, organic growth it is. Um, and so what I'd love to know then is across our four different business lines, if you will, um, how are we doing in each, right? And so by how are we doing, I mean, how much money are we making? What percent of the portfolio is it capturing? Mm -hmm. you know, are we paying a lot more in costs on either? Any of those types of questions would give me a little bit of an understanding of you know, how we're doing in that business, essentially. Yes. So in this case, the 
first chart is often the hardest chart to get, and you have a tough time knowing how exactly the chart's going to look. Um, you'll never guess exactly what it's going to look like. There are probably hundreds of ways in which it could be presented. And so it's your job as the interviewee to essentially ask some form of the right question to earn this chart. The way that I typically think about this is to ask a general slash specific question. So in this case, general means thinking about how is the business doing and specifically what are a couple questions in which the data could be presented. By asking that, it's hard for the interviewer to deny you some sort of information uh, that you're asking for. That sounds like a great idea. So we actually have the revenue by, uh, by segment as well okay. as the projected growth for the Chicago market. Okay. So when you receive your chart in a consulting interview, sometimes it takes a few seconds to really understand what's going on. And you have two options here. You can either sit there in silence and process everything, or the better option is as you're looking at it, you talk through what you're seeing and start making those connections on the fly. And as you can see, Dave did a really great job with this. It looks like we're looking at here on the x-axis revenue by segment. So you know, from that, what it tells me is that alcohol is by far um, our biggest in terms of just raw dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and it also tells me that the bubble size here that you know, it's also the biggest market. Mm -hmm. um, and that seems to correspond almost perfectly. Yes. Um, and then the projected market growth continues to essentially um, essentially lines up exactly with that as well, right? Correct. And so to me, the way that I would read this is that um, further along the right means that it's better. We're better at that, right? Mm -hmm. Further up means that it's growing more. Yep. And the bigger the bubble size, it means that the bigger the market is, right? Correct. And so to me, it sounds like Chicago is a bunch of alcoholics mm. growing fast. We're good at it. And... Um, it's our biggest. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like there's a lot that we can potentially capture there. And so my first inclination would be to go look at alcohol and see if we can continue to expand it. Sure. Um, Cause it's going to grow more. It's already big mm -hmm. and we're good at it. And yeah. So um, you know, do we have a good sense or a game plan of how we would think about tackling this? Um, and is this the right direction that we would want to go strategically within our organization? Could we even expand and ramp up our alcohol production for example? Sure. Yeah. So I think at this point, it feels a little bit like fishing where he wasn't exactly sure where to go. Now, as the interviewer, I, I gave him a lot of credit for when he explained his framework. He had a lot of the hypotheses of where the case was going to go. So I pretty much gave him the credit for really understanding where the case could go. And then this point where it was a little bit more shaky and less directed, I moved it along a little bit. So expanding it out for <laughs> alcohol production, I'd say one area that they've done a lot of research in. So you said there is we can just genuinely grow. So expand right. our production, maybe flood the market, maybe yeah. some type of marketing ideas. Now, what else, what other lever drivers might you want to look at, especially in alcohol and loan sharking that we can, since we're doing so well, we might be able to do. And you actually mentioned it earlier. So as you can see in this point, I said, you mentioned it earlier, and I was very specifically referring to the framework. And a lot of times when you're in the middle of the case, you're going down a certain path, it's really good to take a step back and revisit your framework and say, okay, what were some of the things that I had mentioned earlier? And a lot of times that can reground you and give you the traction you need to get, to get back on track. Um, so it sounds like, you know, I don't have a great sense of how the rest of this industry looks, but um, you know, organically we might start there, but you know, if there are other players in the market, I'd love to see what they're doing to see mm -hmm. if there's anything that they're doing well. And if they're doing something really well and we really like it, maybe we could copy it or just take them over. Right. Got it. Got so it. I'd love to see what the rest of the industry is doing potentially in alcohol. That's so I just want to point out one small and interesting element to this case that if we look at now, if you look at the chart that has Chicago area revenue, a lot of times charts will have some additional insights that are a little bit more subtle and difficult to catch. So if you look here, let's look at particular loan sharking. On the x-axis, you have the revenue by segment for Hal's organization. So this is the money that he's making every year. Now the size of the bubble is actually the size of the entire Chicago market. And if you look very closely, you can tell that the size of the bubble is about the same as the $10 million legend where he's making $10 million. So a exceptional response to this chart would have picked up on that and said, whoa, it looks like his, the size of Hal's organization for this product 
is actually the same as the entire market. And that could give you the insight that he really owns the entire market for Chicago, therefore limiting where he can go from there. That's a very interesting point. We actually have one, one chart that not only covers the market size for Chicago for many of these industries, mm, okay. it also covers the market size for some nearby areas nearby. that we've been considering. Okay. So alcohol. Oh, got it. So we're looking at the size of business here mm -hmm. across different markets. Um, so Chicago, even in alcohol, is pretty small. And, you know, I mean, that makes sense given the size of the city, but it looks like there's a lot of other markets here that we could potentially expand into. And it looks like, for the most part, the trends um, mirror what, what we see here. Correct. And so, you know, the first thought that jumps out on this, this one is that, um, you know, if we're doing well in Chicago, um, there's no reason to think that we couldn't necessarily do well in another market. Mm -hmm. And so we could look at expansion in New York. You know, it seems like a pretty notorious city for this type of business. Right. Um, same thing goes for loan sharking, which is big and growing as well. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not as big as alcohol. But um, I think any of these potential markets is a potential, um, you know, entrant in terms of, you know, probably not Newark, but, you know, that might just get lumped in with New York. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to me, what I would start with is saying, if we're just based in Chicago right now, yeah. let's look at what it would take to be in New York, right? Right. Absolutely. I, I think I think it's pretty, pretty spot on. So, okay. you know, if, if you were thinking about what you'd want to look at in order to decide which city would be the best, what are some issues you might want to consider? Now, one of the most common questions that we get at Consulting Confidant is, how do I take my case performance to the next level? How do I go from good to great? And, and what does that even mean? And how do I know the difference? Now, if we look at this chart in Dave's performance, he does a good performance. He understands where the case is going. He starts talking about the so what. So what's missing? The part that's missing is he doesn't really hypothesize around how is he going to make the decision between which city Hal Capone should go into. He does notice the difference in revenue, but it's clear that's not necessarily enough to get to the next step of the case. So the best way to go about it would be, well, we can do this by revenue. I'd also want to understand risk and our likelihood of success how our supply chain would work in different areas. And in this point, I have to push Dave to the next step. And he does a great job after he gets that. But this is one of those little nuances that will make the difference between a good performance that will probably get you to the next round and a great performance that will make you stand out. Uh, I'd be interested in looking at competition, right? So if I were looking at New York, um, what does the rest of the market look like for, for illegal alcohol, right? It sounds like there's $50 million of market size potential here in New York. I don't right. know how fast it's growing, but um, you know, if there's another famous family that's really dominating that market, it doesn't necessarily make sense for us to go in there unless we kind of strike a partnership or take them out or something of that sort. And so I would love to see, you know, particularly in alcohol and loan sharking, um, what the rest of the market looks like in some of these big cities. Absolutely. So you have competitors. I think that's really spot on and fantastic. Any, anything else you'd want to look at in terms of what would be an issue with going into a totally new region? Um, we could look at potentially consumer tastes, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that here in Chicago, um, there might be certain types of alcohol that we really like. Malort for some reason. Mm. We may be producing a lot of Malort and it may not be very possible. So what hasn't been said about Malort that hasn't been said about <laughs> fertilizer? <laughs> And so, you know, that, that's one potential thing is to look at consumer taste and just the profile of what people are actually drinking there. Um, I think that's something worth looking at. Um, so right, is there so anything we have on that? Yeah, so we actually did a, a pretty in-depth market entry research project looking wow. at all of the different cities. Okay. And yeah, I'd like to get your thoughts on what, what, what we see. All right, so willingness to JV, that's joint venture, right? Correct. Um, and so it sounds like New York, obviously, is not really willing to partner with us. Um, supplier relationships, it looks like we're covered there. Um, regulatory relationships, so tell me a little bit more about what that means. So over the course of your career as a consultant, you're going to come across a lot of different terms that companies have made up. You're going to hit a lot of different industries, and there's going to be a lot of terminology that you don't know. So if you don't know what something means, always better to ask about it even if it's something that could be relatively basic it's better to get the clear definition as opposed to operating under the assumption and being wrong regulatory relationships are 
how many of the corrupt politicians and hmm. police officers do you have some type of relationship with? Got it. Okay. You need to get some cover in this yeah. prohibition era. All right, market. that makes sense. One ruthless main player, Charlie Columbus. One minor player, uh, Tony, unlik unlikely to stay in the business. Uh, one main player, Bucky, good relationship, dislikes Columbus. Um, Los Angeles, very fragmented, and it sounds like no willingness. Um, and so when I look at this, it sounds like it actually brings a couple of pretty interesting points. So the first thing that jumps out to me here is that it looks like we have a willingness to partner here. Um, supplier relationships, yes. Mm -hmm. No regulatory, but it sounds like this main player, Bucky, might have some, considering yeah. that, that, that Buck was operating in Newark. And mm -hmm. what I like about Newark is its proximity to New York City, right? Absolutely. Which is that if we can get into Newark and kind of test the grounds there, it might be it might make a lot of sense to have a strategic alliance here to go into New York City and take out Charlie because it looks like there's a little opportunity here with, with Tony potentially leading the business, right? Correct. And so my first potential thought here is that um, though you know Newark is smaller in a mm -hmm. lot, by a lot, by proximity and by its market dynamics, we could use that as a first entrance. Yeah. Um, but the long plan here is to go into New York City, which is much bigger, mm -hmm. and eventually take over that market, right? I, mean, I think that's a fantastic idea. And I'd say for the long-term strategy, that's spot on. Now, we actually talked to Bucky Johnson yesterday, and he gave us a proposal for a okay. deal. And the conditions were that Al Ponco would get 30. Now, while you're often going to get data in the form of an exhibit or a chart, sometimes you're not going to get data in that format. Sometimes the interviewer is just gonna read off a bunch of numbers and you're going to need to write them down and start doing calculations. So that's what's coming up next and I suggest you practice and follow along with the video. Now, we actually talked to Bucky Johnson yesterday and he gave us a proposal for a deal. Okay. And the conditions were that Al Ponco would get 30% of all alcohol, loan sharking, and gambling business. Okay. He'd pay a $3 million fee for this, Okay. for this opportunity. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd want to know about this? Um, you know, in order to figure out how well we do, um, we'd have to figure out what we plan to make in that market, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks Absolutely. like we get a share of something, and let's call it X, right? Yep. We don't know what that is, right? Our costs are $3 million. Are there any other costs that we would think about there in terms of... Um, you know, what we go after. And then the last piece is probably, you know, what is just our margin on that, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're taking X dollars in revenue, right, we're gonna take a 30% cut. So the one thing that I wanna emphasize here is that there's a temptation to sit there and just put your head down and start doing math for a little bit. Um, and that's probably the easier way to do math, but it buys a lot of time when you're actually speaking out loud and it shows the interviewer what type of logic is going through in your head when you're doing the math. And there's a lot of value to that because remember, part of what they're measuring is not just what you're doing, but how you're thinking about it. So talk out your math. And one additional point on there is at the end of the day, consulting is a client services business. The more client friendly you can be in your case interview, the more that your interviewer is going to think, yes, I'd be really comfortable putting this person in front of a CEO or a senior manager at one of our clients. So. This is a really good skill to have, and it's a really good thing to practice that's going to pay dividends in your interview. Out of that. Yep. Um, and we have to pay costs, some cost value, right? Yep. And then we have to subtract this flat fee of $3 million. And so it looks like the missing pieces are, you know, what percent of the market we think we can capture in revenue, um, what our cost structure is, and then subtract the $3 million fee to see if it's profitable in the short run. Yeah, I, mean, that's, I think that's spot on. And I'd say for the revenue side, once Bucky Johnson and Hal Ponka got together, they'd basically take over the entire market. Okay. It should be a clean sweep. So that means that in alcohol, gambling, and loan sharking, there's a combined 40 million to take here. Correct. Um, at 30% of that, 10% um, is four, so we'd make 12 mm -hmm. um, million just in revenue. So take away the three million flat, and we're at nine million. Before that, just so our variable margin, which includes labor, supplies, distribution, yep. 75%. 75%. Margin is 75%. Mar gross margin is gross 75%. Margin. Okay, so that's $9 million that we'll just make in revenue, right? Right. And then our fixed cost of going into there. Okay. So our overall labor, weapons, bribes, warehousing and supply chain, office space comes to a total of $2 million. $2 million. Okay. And so another two from that. So we start with this, this 12 that we're going to make, right? 
and then we take away our uh, cost, the three million, to get us to nine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you said there's a two million dollar fee um, in in fixed costs, right? Which brings us to seven, mm -hmm. and then there's this three million dollar entrance fee um, from Bucky, which brings us to four million dollars that we could we could potentially enter, right? And so correct. Um, it's a small piece compared to kind of our overall portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still, you know, almost a fourth, not quite, right? Yeah. And so to me, that suggests that it would probably be worth doing, especially since it is positive off the bat. Yep. Um, it's a worthy investment making mm -hmm. in making, and you know, this obviously pays out over time. Yep. And it gives us the opportunity to play in the long term. Right. So, you know, the, the first conclusion that I draw here is that, yes, it does make sense for us. So a lot of times at the end of the case, you're going to find you made a conclusion, you did some math, you synthesized your findings, and now you're sitting there wondering, am I, am, I, am I done? What's going on? This is a great point to look back at the original question and say, did I answer this question? Do I have enough information to go to my conclusion? And for this specific case, if you remember, the original question was, how do you help Halponka increase their revenues by 50%? So now we have to take all the work that we had done previously and tie that back to the original question. So is this getting us to the 50%? So if we were to look first, if we were just going to go with just kind of let, let everything run, how much growth do you think we would get? Got it. So would we get to 50%? Okay. So as it stands right now, we're at 20%, right? Um, and so our current business makes 20, 30, 35, and basically zero, right? And so uh, 35 million a year annually, right? And mm -hmm. so at growing at, you know, essentially, you know, this 3 million in cost is not, is that an annual cost or that's just a one-time cost? That's just a one-time one cost. One-time cost. So really what we're doing is we're making 7 million a year, or not, sorry, that's in profit, right? Mm -hmm. We're actually looking at um, revenue here, which is actually this 40 million um, initially, times the 30%, which is that uh, 12 million. Correct. And so we'd be hitting the 12 million here annually. So would we be able to grow at 50%, at least in the first year? Mm -hmm. um, you know, half of 35 is 17 and a half. And so we wouldn't be able to hit it mm -hmm. initially in that first year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's tough to project out second and third year from there. I, I so, think that's a great point. But we also have the organic growth just from each one of those industries. That's growing correct. On their All own. right. So we have the 20% already growing, right? From, correct. From here. Yeah, so if that gets stacked on 20%, 10%, 3.5, it's seven, right? So it's actually 19 million. Mm -hmm. And so um, combined between the two sources of business, um, we do have enough to cover the essentially 17 and a half needed for the 50% growth that we're looking for. Absolutely. So Hal Ponka just came from uh, picking up some supplies and okay. he's on his way over and he'd love to hear your rec final recommendations. All right, so what I would tell Hal... All right, so the final moment, the conclusion, the opportunity to impress, right? So I actually have a five-point framework here that I like to use for conclusions that works pretty much in every single case. Um, and so the conclusion looks like this, right? First, repeat the question back, but don't spend a lot of time on it, like maybe one to two sentences. Second, immediately go into the recommendation and state it out front. Third, back up your recommendation with some of the data or some of the facts from your case. Fourth, take a step back and think about some of the secondary implications. What are some other things that we should think about? And then fifth, restate the conclusion and recommendation and close strong with a final point. All right, so what I would tell Hal is that uh, you know we need to expand immediately. And we're, we're in Chicago, we like it, but we need to go to Newark. Um, the benefits of Newark is that you know we could strike a partnership with our good friend, Buck, Bucky. Um, that would net us probably $12 million annually in the first year. And on top of our current growth in Chicago would allow us to hit our target of 50% annual CAGR, mm -hmm. probably with even more opportunity for expansion once we take over New York in the long run. And that's kind of the next consideration. And so and the overall thought here is let's go to Newark. Let's do it. Let's go to Newark. All right. All right. Oh, the case is over. It looks like we're going to New Jersey. Dirty Jersey. Dirty Jersey. So overall, it was a solid performance. Yeah, so my take on this is that I think the fundamentals were mostly there. You know, that includes coming up with a framework that's logical and fits the case and is customized. Um, that includes um, reading the charts and actually deriving insights from the charts and driving towards the next steps, uh, doing the calculations and arriving at a conclusion that makes sense for the problem at hand. Uh, I think there were a couple areas that could have been better in terms of um, 
fishing a little bit for information when I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, but the really important point to remember here is that a good recovery oftentimes trumps any kind of little stumbles. That's a great point. A great recovery can offset those minor stumbles. So that's our case. Thank you for watching our live case demonstration. So we will be uploading additional case demonstrations over the coming days. So if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to Consulting Confidant's YouTube channel. And lastly, if you're curious about how you'd stack up against other consulting candidates from the perspective of a consultant at a top firm, check out consultingconfidant.com. Here you can schedule a live case or mock fit interview with a consultant from a top consulting firm like BCG, McKinsey, Deloitte, etc. After the case, you'll get customized feedback that can take your case performance to the next level. So thanks again and good luck.